Welcome back everyone, Jake here. In this video, let's quick recap this volatile week in the market and then talk about a new position that I'll be opening in my Schwab account. And if we look at the four major indices for the market, we have the Dow Jones currently selling off down 0.79%. The S&P is down 1.56%. The NASDAQ is down 2.7 and the Russell 2000 is down 2.2. So just by looking at this sell-off, we can see that the trend that's been happening for weeks now is continuing, where companies with uh, more reasonable valuations, price-to-earnings ratios, companies with solid earnings aren't selling off as much. These would be Dow Jones Industrial Companies, whereas companies and stocks that have really high um, price-to-sales ratios, potentially no earnings at all, and their companies are massively diluting you by issuing new shares. These companies are the ones that have speculative growth prospects and the market right now is pricing in slower growth. Yes, 0% interest rates and the Fed buying up the bond markets made money very easy. So it's, it's reasonable to price in today unrealistic growth at prospects in the future. But next year, 2022, the, the the market just can't keep keep going up forever like this. The money supply at some point will start contracting, and that's what's being priced in right now with these with these sell offs. So we'll talk about that more in a second. But the good news is that Congress passed a continuing resolution to fund the government. President Biden signed it, and this will keep the government open opening and functioning through February 18th. It's sad that this is good news, but is what it is. This is this is how they do it in Congress. They don't do anything until the last possible seconds and you don't really know if it's actually going to happen. So we're in the clear, in my opinion, as far as the markets go for the next couple months. Now, the market is selling off because of this Omicron news, but my last video I mentioned I don't think this is a serious thing that will change the economy much in any way. How much did the Delta variant that was discovered over a year ago stop the market from going up? I mean, the market did pretty well this last year. Earnings are good uh, for the major companies. Everybody's hiring. If you want to work, you can find a job. The economy is great right now. So with the market selling off, if you are holding up here and you're panic selling down here, then you're just going to be panic buying once it's gone up and you, you'll, you'll destroy your positions if you don't hold. I don't think uh, the market will go much lower than right here. You'll notice back in October there was a market sell-off and the, uh, the share price of SPY or the S&P 500 got below its 100-day moving average. So what's happening with this sell-off right here? This one is much steeper, which I actually think is good news. But I think as soon as it hits this 100-day moving average, the volatility will slow down and we'll get this, this melt up basically of buyers, similar like we had between uh, mid-October and early November. However, if you're in a speculative high growth stock, I don't think the sell-off is going to end anytime soon. DocuSign is down 41% today. So year to date, DocuSign is down 38%. So remember, the S&P 500 year to date is still up over 23%. And a company like DocuSign is down 38. So DocuSign has underperformed the broader market by 51%. Uh, same thing with a lot of these other speculative stocks. Uh, here's Penn National Gaming, year-to-date down 40%. I have no idea why this shot up 61% in the first three months of the year, but once again, a very speculative play during COVID. Other companies that are pretty decent, Square, uh, down 19% year-to-date. And you don't have to look any further, guys, than this P-to-E ratio of 187. It's ridiculous. That's why these stocks are currently selling off. Over one month, down 29%. Same is true for the SPACs and the IPOs. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you guys know on my channel I don't recommend SPACs or IPOs. Robinhood, year-to-date down 37%. From its high, down 69%. Wow. The ARK Innovation Fund, I, I like checking this every day, guys, because I'm so glad that 
I'm not this kind of investor, but it's it's down 5.8% today. Uh, Kathy Wood is a huge holder of DocuSign, so that's probably what's dropped at almost 6% today. But once again, year to date, this fund is down 25%, while the broader market is up 24%. So with the high growth stocks massively selling off, which stocks are good? Which stocks should you be buying right now? And the position that I'm going to take today is in HCA Healthcare Incorporated. When we look at their year-to-date performance, they're up 40%. Uh, market cap is $71 billion, so it's a pretty, pretty big company. Small dividend yield of 0.83%. And it's look at its price to earnings ratio, only 11. Uh, it's 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 actually been selling off a little bit in the short term, down 8% over the last month. But we'll get into the technicals and we'll get into the fundamentals. Not much to say about HCA Healthcare. It's just a boring for-profit healthcare company that manages 186 hospitals nationwide. Based out of Nashville, Tennessee, it's uh, I think the 80, I think it's in the Fortune 100. Uh, but I, I like these kinds of companies, guys, that have very low downside risk, good valuations. I then use options to leverage my money on them in order to get more dramatic returns. But once again, I'm seeking out companies with small downside risk. So let's go on macro trends and check out the fundamental basics of HCA healthcare. And ideally, you want to be investing in companies that are increasing their revenue. So if we look at their quarterly revenue, uh, last quarter, they did $15 billion in revenue, which is up year over year by 14%. I will happily all day, every day, invest in a company growing its revenue year over year by 14% and only has a price to earnings ratio of 11. So what is their uh, net income? Once again, we wanna make sure that the company can remain profitable quarter over quarter. And sure enough, here we are. Uh, they, they, they had $2.2 billion in pro uh, profit last quarter. That seems a little high. So obviously with net income, you can fudge the numbers sometimes to make it look higher or lower. But you'll notice going all the way back to its history in 2005, it's never had a negative quarter where they've lost money on the books. Let's check out shares outstanding. And once again, we don't want to invest, invest in companies that are issuing new stock. They're diluting your ownership of the company. We can see their share counts kind of peaked in 2013, and they've been consistently buying back stock ever since. As of the last quarter, they decreased their share counts uh, year over year by 5%. If you had bought HCA and just held it for a year, your share of equity in the company would have increased by 5%, all other things held constant. This is why HCA is outperforming the market year to date. Uh, good, good growth and uh, stock buybacks. So let's check out HCA's price ratios. And we said that its price to earnings was only 11, which seems like a good deal, but it can't hurt to compare what is it being currently valued at to what has it been historically valued at. And currently its price to earnings is only 11.82, and that's down from last quarter, 12.36, down from the quarter before, 14.15, was even recently as high as 15. And when we look at their historical valuations, its price to earnings has always been between basically 9, 10, 11, 15, as high as potentially 18. So compared to where it's been valued in the past, HCA is, 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 is valued nicely, but considering how overvalued the broad market is, it's undervalued by comparison. When we look at their price chart, it has been selling off the last week or so. I did check Google News just once again saying, is there a reason? Is there some newsworthy event I'm not aware of that which is causing this short-term sell-off? And I don't think there is. Let's actually go on Charles Schwab and we'll do a deeper analysis of the technicals of what the heck is going on right now with HCA. So let's adjust this chart to make it easier to understand potentially. Let's add candlesticks, and you'll notice that the stock jumped up here between 220 and 240. And what do you think happened on that day? 
if we add earnings, sure enough, it gapped up on having good a, a good quarter uh, back in September. So when we look at this stock, uh, if we just kind of ignore the, the uptrends that happened earlier this year, we can see that there was a line of resistance originally here at the 120, and earnings was needed for it to break through this. Uh, potentially this 220, which was a line of, line of resistance, is now a line of support. But for, let's see here, between, between what two months? Between July and basically a week ago, before all this Omnicron nonsense, the stock was trading in a very nice range between 240 and uh, the high end here of 260. So 260 is our line of resistance that HCA has to get through in order to go up to a nice round number. Eventually, I see the stock wanting to get up to 300. Now, it has dipped below 240, and I thought that potentially it might make it back down to 220, 220 being where buyers would step in. It does look like it's going to recover uh, and get back above this 240, and if it can do that, it's just getting back into its old channel. And this is a great time to buy HCA because it, it already proved that 240 was a line of support, 260 was a line of resistance. If this can just get back above 240 and make it back to 260, I might even sell it for a profit then. It doesn't even have to necessarily break through 260. You know, $25 worth of share price move on a bunch of call contracts is a nice, nice amount of money. However, uh, if this stock can get back above 240 after the Omicron stuff passes, uh, it might take another earnings event for it to finally get through this 260. I'm, I'm sure that, let's see here, they reported uh, next scheduled earnings is February 1st. So it might take until February 1st for it to break through that 260. I'm actually fine waiting for that day, waiting for that event. However, I want to get into HCA today while it's uh, still on this lower end here. And another reason why this is a good time is if we add the technical indicators, we want to add the simple moving averages line. Often when stocks run up huge, they just kind of ch start channeling sideways and they need to take a need to take a break until the 200 day moving average uh, catches up. So this red line is the 20 day, the green uh, is the 50 day. And when it gapped up huge, it just started trading sideways, and it's been waiting for this 200-day to catch up. Now, the, the stock hasn't, the share price actually hasn't touched it, and the 200-day moving average isn't close yet to the 240, which is really, really where it really needs to get before it'll start uh, breaking out again. But for me, this is this is a great entry point. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this position, and let's add it in my Schwab account. As always, guys, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. If you see what I see and you like what I like, help yourself. If you guys want to just buy the stock, that's the easiest way to make money off this play. I like leveraging my money with call contracts. So we are going to be buying uh, long calls far out in the future. I like uh, selecting at least a year in advance, once again, to give myself time for this position to play out. So I'm going to go with a uh, expiration date of January 20th, 2023. That's 413 days in the future. And I'm going to choose, let's see, HCA is currently at 229. So let's go with a, uh, a, a, ooh, with a strike of 230. Now you'll notice uh, the bid ask is pretty wide here. It's a difference of 430, meaning a $430 difference per contract. So what that means is there's not a lot of people trading options on HCA. So when you want to get into the position or get out of the position, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. I'm perfectly fine with that. And I'm going to go with a quantity of two. I'm going to do a market order for this video once again, because I want it to get filled. Schwab's been doing a really good job of giving me a price close to the mid. So obviously they've got some kind of thing going on in the background. And even when I do a market order, it doesn't automatically go right to where the sellers are asking. So let's see 3490. I'm pretty confident this will get filled closer to 32 or 33. So let's go ahead and review this order and execute. So we're back on my main account page right here and it looked like it filled at 3366. Uh, cost, cost overall was uh, 6731. 
So that's that's a pretty good pretty good cost basis for two contracts. Once again, expiration is super far out. I'm pretty leveraged in this account, guys. Uh, so HCI, I'm just holding 100 shares. That's 20% of my accounts. The other 80% now is entirely leveraged on calls uh, on Apple, Berkshire, Capital One, General Dynamics, Texas Instruments. The market is down and my account is down, uh, mostly because of HCI selling off down 1300 and this spy spread. Oh, oh, this is this is hurting bad, guys. This is down twenty two hundred dollars now. Capital One is also down two thousand. But thankfully, Apple, Berkshire, uh, General Dynamics and Texas Instruments are all up. What we need is for the broader market to recover, for people just to get back into the market, and then I think all of these will 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 drift up uh, as a benefit. But yeah, we need we need SPY as a whole to recover, and hopefully it can do that starting next week. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.